Prof, let's bring in another uh, another scholar here on the program tonight. We have joining us an associate professor, an expert in communication from Bayes University in Abuja. Dr. Abiodun Adeni joins us from our Abuja studio. Many thanks, uh, Dr. Adeni, for joining us on the program. Let me immediately ask you, uh, with what we've seen so far, what is your assessment of the kind of uh, arrival and the atmosphere that uh, the president got and what you saw, you are a resident of Abuja, what you saw yesterday, what do you make of it? Yeah, thanks, Bishayoum, uh, for having me. Good evening, viewers. Um, the first thing to say really is that, uh, like Professor Ibody said earlier, the atmosphere was quite ecstatic. You know, it shows some kind of um, relief for the citizenry. You know, uh, the arrival of the president actually um, thawed the atmosphere of uncertainty, of uncertainty that had permeated the nation in the last couple of uh, weeks or so. So uh, the president is um, a very strategic person in the country. He's a very prime position. Whatever happens to him, of course, we know, happens to the nation as a whole. So he's rather marked a kind of difference for us all. And most importantly, we expect things to begin to happen differently, you know, going forward in the weeks ahead. But again, there's another quick observation to make, really. You know, I see um, a kind of crisis of confidence permeating the land, an atmosphere of disbelief, one of distrust. Yes, Professor Yibody has said that uh, the issue is not um, really legal, that it is somewhat political. But I also want to say that it is safer to stick to the legal aspect of it. We have the situation, we have laws, we're governed by laws, we're governed by, we are ruled by the Constitution, or rather we are guided by the Constitution. And the President dutifully abided by the provision of the Constitution which says that in the event of incapacitation, or in the event that he's not able to continue with his job, for whatever reason, he should hand over to a Vice President. And he dutifully did that. You know, it's a kind of movement from what we had, what we had in our recent uh, years, you know, where somebody was sick and he did not transmit power to his vice president. Now, this president moved, advanced from that level and transmitted power legally, dutifully, procedurally to his vice. Then where then did the acrimony, did the crisis of confidence come from? You know, from so what, what, what should be the problem when somebody abide by the law? You know, somebody complied with the laws of the land, then why should it be a problem? This is not necessarily patronizing the president, but I'm just saying that, you know, we were actually worked up by um, some, a kind of, um, you know, crisis that come from our difference, from our otherness, you know, which we, should, which we should begin to address as a nation. And I expect the president to really emphasize this tomorrow. You know, he should make statements that will renew our faith in the land. You know, and the onus is on him to drive this. The onus is on him to galvanize us, you know, to, to make, to bring about a spirit of cohesion so that trust can return to the land. You know, yes, trust should definitely return to the land if we, ha if we have to move forward. And most importantly, again, I expect him tomorrow to deliver what should look like a mini midterm report. We had a midterm report that the, uh, the vice president, as acting president, delivered um, some weeks ago. But the president back in the country need to give us another one, like a millimeter report, to review what they have done in the last two years and how they want to proceed in the next couple of months, you know, to try to fulfill unfulfilled promises, you know, so um, he will not have wasted the goodwill that um, the majority of Nigerians invested in him in 2015 when they voted him in as president. Dr. Thank you, Adeni, sure. are you disappointed, uh, uh, morally speaking now, by the level of information that Nigerians had when the president was away, especially when uh, over three weeks or going into two months or so, that nobody heard, seen any pictures of the president like we saw when he traveled uh, earlier in the year in January and he returned in March. And the fact that uh, whether or not we were paying for the parking fees of uh, the aircraft, the Eagle One, that was parked in the United Kingdom, some of the information and the way it has been handled. What are your first uh, impressions about the president's communication and the apparatus surrounding him? 
Oh, yeah. You see, some of those issues are actually discretionary. We're talking about um, the president of a country. You know, the information, the item of information that should be released um, should actually be contextual. You know, there should be some side conspection about what the populace can, what, what can be released to the populace. Do not forget that we are, we are in a trying society. Our society is not, is not yet as advanced as the Western industrial democracies. So some of the things that happen at the level of information in those countries cannot especially be replicated here. Because if they are replicated, don't forget our monumental differences, our monumental, the kind of otherness that exists around us. You know? So somehow we need some level of um, moderation, some level of circumspection. And you can, you can disrupt this process if you do not manage information very well. Like I said earlier, he has told us that, um, he, was, he, that he was sick and he was going to seek um, medical treatment elsewhere, abroad. Okay? And he dutifully handed over power. You know? Now, if we begin to ask what, is the, what the nature of the sickness is, which hospital is he going to, who is the doctor treating him, um, we might be going too far. You know, we might be going too far and we may just be belaboring the issue and to some extent really we may not even be fair to him. You know, because he is entitled, yes, a public figure, but he's entitled to some level of privacy. I'm not saying that they were, they were actually perfect, the way they handled it, you know, they have well managed information, but you see, information dissemination, management of information is largely discretionary and you have to be calculative because there are some kind of information that you release, you know, that could cause some combustion, that could disrupt uh, the system and create some kind of dysfunction, which may become very difficult to manage at the end of the day. So we'll leave that to its information managers. It is their right, it is, it is their sense of, it is their judgment to, to let us know what they want to know, what, what they need us to know. And it's also within um, their judgment to reserve what they think should be reserved. Okay. But well, there might be rooms for improvement, but I also want to believe that they have learned their lessons going forward. And God forbid where we find ourselves in this kind of situation again, I want to believe that they will do better than they did the last time. Yep. Well, up next on the program, the People's Democratic Party has bragged that about a lot as a race to 2019 already kicked off. We'll take into party politics when we return.